Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for taking the time to join me today. My name is Kristen Majenst and I'm your product education specialist here at Tradesmith. I do work alongside Marina Stroud, your Tradesmith product education lead within our education department. Within the chat box, I usually include the webinar script and registered attendees will receive the webinar recording along with the script the following business day. Additionally, a recorded version of the webinar will also be available on the Tradesmith Finance uh, website's help menu. Upon completion of the Tradesmith Bootcamp series, we will host the beginner and intermediate bootcamp series again. And based on you know relevant information and all these new site releases that we have going on, we are updating these webinars regularly. And after careful consideration, our education team has decided to alternate the beginner and intermediate boot camps. We look forward to working on some new and exciting educational endeavors where we can provide more short how-to videos and also do some specialized training for each product and level. We will post the beginner and intermediate bootcamp webinar registration links in the help menu for the entire month. So at all times, there should be four classes that you are able to register for the month. And sometimes it goes into the next month. Like for example, in the help menu right now, you should be able to uh, register for some classes in July. All right, so let's go ahead and look at today's topics. Oops, went too far. All right, there we go. So today um, we're going to look at some screens uh, like the markets tab and some other information. So Tracemith provides market outlook tools and signals to help you determine the current market state to kind of pinpoint opportunities and well-performing markets, sectors, and commodities. Today we're going to review how the health indicator and the health trend and ratings distributions allows you to x-ray each market and its component holdings. Our market outlook tools also allows you to review each market's historical health and distribution data. We will discuss the bullseye and bear's eye signals which may warn you um, of market corrections and significant turns. And you may have also seen our experts in the Tracemith Daily 2023 investing forecast. We will wrap up our discussion with their prediction for 2023. Um, I also included with those predictions a link to their uh, video that they did for 2023, so it hasn't changed. So if we can get to that, we will. If not, it is in the script. And I'm sorry, you guys don't have a script right now to go by, I was having issues and errors uploading any type of documents to Zoom. I don't know if it's a Zoom issue. So you will be able to uh, see their predictions. All right, so before we get started, I just need to mention our usual disclaimer. The information we present today and in upcoming tutorials is intended for educational purposes only. We are not financial advisors and cannot provide any individualized advice or recommendations. We are recording today's presentation, so if you do miss something, don't worry about it. You will be able to go back and rewatch it at your convenience. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And we're gonna go ahead and head to the website. So let me just get rid of this PowerPoint here. And let me pull up the site. Those of you that are joining us, um, I do apologize. You will not find a script or PowerPoint in the chat box. I was having issues and errors, so I apologize, but it will be there in the help menu this evening and it'll also be emailed to you as well. All right, let me make this full view, full screen. <laughs> All right, that should be good. All right, so I'm already logged into my Tracemith Finance account. Just as a reminder, you will log into your account via finance.tracemith.com, no matter what product subscription you hold with us. Also, I have access to the full suite of Tracemith products with my Platinum subscription, so your site may look different from mine. And we do this because we think as a result, when it comes time to consider upgrading, we think it's you know beneficial to kind of show the entire suite of tools to maybe if one tool interests you, you're able to see it and how you know it performs. 
All right, so let's go ahead and just quickly check out the help menu where you can go to access additional educational resources, including all of these boot camp webinars and short how to video tutorials. So to get there, you're simply going to click on the green help button here. Once you do that, um, you can scroll down to Tracemith Bootcamp and Video Tutorials. Go ahead and click on that to expand. The beginner level boot camps will be hosted here in this little um, folder. And then the intermediate classes will be um, put here in this little folder. All right, so all of these should be up to date to today um, with all of the boot camps we've done this far. And those of you that prefer a shorter how-to video, typically 20 minutes or less on a particular topic or tool, uh, go ahead and check out the how-to video tutorials. Uh, we added a few new ones in there this past last week before Marina left, so be sure to check that out. And of course, to register for all these boot camps, you can click here and you should see them for the month. Let me just show you guys. All right, so you're able to register for four classes. And then once today's finished, I'll remove this and then I'll add the next one, which is going to be in July. Also, if you guys want Marina wanted me to point this out for you guys, she added this little snippet here. Where's Marina? It's a really adorable video of her uh, just saying goodbye to you guys and letting you know where she's at. So be sure to check that out. What I'm going to do is I'll include that snippet. For those of you um, that registered, I'll email it to you guys in your email that you get tomorrow with the script and webinar, okay? But yeah, be sure to check that out. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Let me just quickly go back to the help menu really fast just to show those that want a concierge where you could do that. So we do offer a complimentary 30-minute uh, concierge to our customers com completely free. Um, and what that is, is where you could, you know, book a day and time and you would schedule it by clicking here and then schedule a concierge appointment. We're not going to go through the steps because it does take some time, but the main point or the most important point here is if you've never registered for a concierge, you do have to, if it's your first time, you do have to register. So when you go here and you see a login button, do not try to put your user credentials for our site because it will not work. It's a separate scheduling site. So you do just have to register that very first time, maybe jot that down somewhere because um, that's going to be your login for the scheduling site. And you're more than welcome to do, you know, as many appointments as you'd like. There's no like cap on the number of appointments one shall have, but we just allow you to book one at a time. All right. So definitely take advantage of that. You can, you know, ask for a particular topic that you want to talk about. You can get like a walkthrough of the dashboard, for example. So you really uh, control it there. Um, you just have to let the representative know what you want to talk about and what you want to learn about. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Oh, one, one more quick thing. Or for our Platinum members, you do have a, your own folder here. Um, and then this is where you can register for your Platinum exclusives and so forth. Okay, so instead of you guys having your dashboard, you have your own little folder. All right, let me go ahead and get out of here. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, I apologize, we do not have a script that I can put in the chat box for you all today. I was having some errors, so you will get that emailed to you tomorrow and it will be loaded in the help menu um, later this evening uh, that you can refer back to. So I apologize, um, I was having errors, I'm not sure why. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. And one last thing before we get started, um, there is nobody on chat, but please still feel free to leave your questions in the chat or Q&A box, whatever you prefer. All right, so we are going to start our conversation with human emotion. So you can see all you can see all influences on price action in the charts. So effects such as earnings, news, income statements, balance sheets. Fed announcements, terrorist attacks, war, et cetera, affect the thoughts and perceptions of investors. So these thoughts leave their mark on the charts. So our fear and greed tool, which is here, our fear and greed tool allows you to see um, like 
allows you to do allows you to see the driving emotions in today's market and can be found right here under the market health widget we call this of your dashboard so you can see them on the dashboard and this box right here is considered the health widget and the first little tab is going to be the fear and greed so the fear and greed tool can also be found in the market outlook tab of the markets page up here and we'll get to that um, when we get to that tab so this is just like CNN's fear and greed index. So this tool is a composite of several indicators that gauge the market's mood. Uh, to review the indicators in more detail, you can click the detailed overview link. So right here, if I click that. So the indicators include um, various things like junk bond demand, market momentum, market volatility, safe haven demand, uh, stock price strength, and put and call options. And each card includes a description for each indicator. So as you can see here, oh, and stock price spread too. And then it just gives a little paragraph. Uh, the tool tracks how much these indicators uh, deviate from their averages compared to how they normally uh, diverge. So the index is going to give each indicator equal weighting in calculating a score from 0 to 100, with 100 representing maximum greediness and 0 signaling maximum fear. So as of today actually i think i ran it yeah as of today june 13th our fear and greed tool points to extreme greed so this little speedometer here you can see the pointer is pointing to um, extreme greed sentiment indicators help identify potential turning points when fear and greed are at extremes the theory states that excessive fear drives down share prices and too much greed drives up share prices, but they they are really only useful when they hit extremes. So mild fear, neutral and mild greed generally don't have much predictive value. You can also review the fear and greed over time and it also assess the fear and greed scores. All right, so if you click here, the second tab, the fear and greed over time. So the fear and greed tool um, does not indicate extreme fear or greed. So we're not, we would not recommend solely relying on this tool to determine the market condition. Okay, this is just something in your toolbox that you can come to and look at. And you can see it provides various charts you can actually look at all um, and it's going to give you a lot of information we do um, do it standardized to one year all right so definitely get in there and check that out all right so let's go ahead and check out the markets page at the top of the navigational header markets and those of you that are joining and you don't have access to markets or you don't have a markets tab, you do have to have a subscription to either Trade 360, Ideas, be a Platinum member or TradeSmith Essentials um, in order to see this. All right, so below um, are the market outlook, uh, S&P sectors and commodity tabs. So each of these are tabs and then crypto, which we're not going to get into today. I did at the end of your script, which I know you guys don't have. Um, I did get some market outlook info from our uh, analyst, Joe Shu on the crypto market. So you can check that out once you get the script tomorrow or check it out on the help menu later this evening. All right. Um, again, the crypto, you also have to have a crypto ideas by Trey Smith or Platinum or Essentials account to even see this crypto. All right, so let's we're going to start with the market outlook tab, which is the first one, which it defaults to. So the default view for the market outlook tab, it, it does do this in tile view. You can adjust the display if you want. Um, the tile view, which we're on now, you can see we're on tile view. Um, it's going to provide different layouts and the bullseye and bear's eye icons will look different depending on which 
uh, view you prefer. The bullseye and bear's eye signals can be displayed as a green or red bullseye under the health indicator. You must be on tile um, view to see this. So I'm referring to these right here. That would be a bullseye when it's in green. Uh, let me see if we have a red one we do for Hong Kong. Um, and the, the bear signal is gonna be displayed in red. And we'll talk more about the bullseye and bear's eye signals. However, just to give you some information, to trigger a, a bullseye signal, the health distribution percentage of red zone stocks needs to drop below 60%, only after being at or above 60%. So the health indicator entry signal can also mark the bullseye signal. All right, so the S&P 500 index, we're gonna go ahead and click on or look at right here as one of my examples. So the S&P 500 index um, triggered the bullseye signal. Um, well, let me go back. The S&P 500 index triggering the bullseye signal is, um, an import, is as important as it is largely considered you know, a benchmark for the US stock markets. Um, so that's why I picked that example. Um, and you can see that um, it's been in a bullseye and a bull market since January 6, 2023. The Russell 1000 triggered the bullseye signal on January 3rd, 2023. So if you hover over the signals, it'll let you know when it actually went into from, from the bear signal to the bull. If you are risk averse, you will want to wait until, until more than one primary index triggers the bullseye market signals, especially the S&P 500, which is the SPX, and the NASDAQ, the NDX indexes. However, if you're looking for an investment opportunity, maybe you can find healthy stocks from the markets that triggered our bullseye signals. So you can see, um, that the NDX triggered a bullseye signal on this past couple of months. Where is that at? Right here. Um, it triggered a bull signal in uh, February of 2000, February 23rd, 2023. All right. And I know once when we did this assess the health of the markets back in January, the NDX was in the red, but now it's back in the green. All right. Let's go ahead and review the charts and distribution graphs. So you can review any market chart and health distribution in two ways. You can either click on the ticker symbol from the list view. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the list view. I prefer list view, but it's all depends on what you prefer. So if you click on list, this is how it used to be the old way before we got the tile screen. So you can what I was referring to is you can click on, you know, the ticker symbol when you're in list view. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the S&P 500, which is here. So you can either click here, you can click any of these. And all it's going to do is just shoot you down the page to, to that graph instead of you having to scroll. That's all that does. All right. So let's look at this S&P 500. All right. So at the top of the page, you're going to see the latest price right here. You're going to see the Trey Smith indicators and the 52 week price range. So indicators and the 52 week price range. And then below, you're going to see the health distribution here, um, which is the health distribution graph and the chart, the historical data for the fear and greed tool you'll also see here on the graph. So it's off to the side what each of these bars mean. So here's the fear and greed um, colors here. And then this health distribution is at the bottom of the chart, just like it is if you looked at a, your portfolio and you pulled up a particular stock, it's gonna be the same bars here, showing the green, yellow, red. All right. So let's review the historical health distribution graph for this S&P 500. So I'm gonna move my, um, my chart around a little bit. Um, it does default to six months, but I'm gonna put it to three years just so we can look at the bear's eye signal, like when it triggered and the bullseye. 
All right, so on this chart, you can see here, it triggered a bear signal back on May 9th of 2022. So what does that mean? So what that means is we would have sent out a a, an alert, basically, letting you know that the S&P 500 is going into a bear market. At that point, um, you would take it upon yourself to get out of uh, those stocks in the S&P 500 if you choose. Um, those that's the point of the bear signals is to let you know that we're going to a bear market, you know, to get out of that, just like we did with the COVID um, downfall. We let everybody know, um, you know, the stocks were falling and stuff. And we sent out this mass alert, letting you know, we're entering a bear signal to get out of the market and to do, just basically wait. You just wait until we send out a bull bull's eye um, alert, letting you know it's okay to get back in. Now, the say that, for example, for COVID, um, a lot of these markets went down at once and we sent the bear signal mostly at the same time in February. And not all of the markets came back at the same time. So you would have gotten alerts, you know, for example, for the S&P 500, letting you know it's okay to get back in, but you may not have received it for the Russell, for example. They all came back at different times. All right, so you can see that the last bear signal was on May 9th of 2022. And then we did not send out a, um, a bullseye market to get back in until January 6th of 2023, okay? So you can see if you go straight down here, you see all this red, most of everything was in the red. Okay, so that's a point of the bear's eye and bullseye uh, signals. Now, um, let's go ahead and go back up to the market outlook tab. So from the list view, oh, let me go back up right here. From the list view, you can open this little drop down here and you can screen, like use a screener for underlying components of any given index or sector um, by just clicking this. And then what it's gonna do is if you click on view components, this is just gonna route you to the screener tool where you can you know, add additional filters to narrow down your search according to your preferences. So I'll go ahead and click on it and I'll come back. All right, and then you can go here to manage filters and you know, put whatever filters you choose and go ahead and run the screener. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back. I hope it doesn't give me error. It did earlier this morning. All right. So according to our indicators, um, let's look at the uh, S&P 500 sectors where you can find potential investment opportunities in top performing sectors. So this is one of my favorite tabs. I come to the S&P sectors a lot. Um, I like to see what sector is doing well. <laughs> so I'm going to, you can either leave this in tile view, so same thing, or you could put it in list view. I'm going to go ahead and put it in list view. That's just the view I like to look at it. All right, so these are the S&P sectors located here. Um, you can see that energy, uh, what else? Information technology, consumer staples, and communication services are all in the green health. And these little numbers next to the one just lets you know how long it's been in that um, state. So W would be weeks, M would be months, Y would be years. And if you have a D like David, then it's days. All right, um, so let's look at energy. So if I came here, I would definitely be interested in looking at the stocks in the energy sector, because you can see if you hover over here, 50% of stocks are are in the green zone making up the energy sector 30 approximately 38 percent are in the yellow zone meaning that's a period of correction uh it's kind of like a caution it's not in the red yet and then only about 12 percent is in the red zone i would also you know look at the consumer discretionary possibly where you can see approximately 51 percent of their symbols are in the uh, green zone so if I came here to screen for uh, S&P sectors, I would definitely, you can either click on energy to look at the actual energy sector and get more information. It's gonna bring you to the chart, just like the S&P 500 that we just looked at. 
Here is where you can use the screener. So these little binoculars, what it does is it takes you directly into the screener. So say that I wanted, say I ran the asset allocation tool where I wanted to see what sectors I'm invested in because, you know, you don't really want to have all your eggs in one basket. And say I was missing, you know, stocks in the energy sector, I would come here and run the screener right from here. So I obviously want green stocks. So I would click here. I would leave this alone. Um, you can mess with it if you want. If you want to get fancy and add filters, that's totally fine. I'm going to leave it how it is and I can hit run screener. And here it gave me 12 results. I could, you know, look at these 12 results that it came back with and possibly, you know, add these to my portfolio to have my portfolio, you know, uh, an array of every sector, you know, not just investing in one sector. So that is, oh, my internet. Okay, there we go. <laughs> my Wi-Fi button went away. So that is how I screen for stocks. I always, I have always tended to go to the uh, markets tab, go to the S&P sectors for some reason and see what sector is performing well. And you don't even really have to, look at the ones that are in the green health zone, for example, the entire sector. Let me show you. So we're going to go back. So say that you ran the asset allocation tool. And those of you um, that are wondering what the asset allocation tool, that's a tool that can be found under the invest tab. And what that does, I'll show you and then we'll come back. I'm sorry, my portfolios, my bad. Under my portfolios. So the asset allocation tool is where you can come to basically avoid putting all your eggs in one basket, it basically lets you look at your distribution across sectors or industries. So I could come here, you know, run this tool. And that's what I was referring to is if I was missing some stocks and energy, I would come to markets. And once it loads, I could click on S&P sectors and check out the energy sector. I'm going to put it in list view. So um, you could also, you know, screen for stocks, even though, you know, the materials say the actual health of the entire sector is in the red, you can still find potential opportunities. You can see that approximately 14% are in the green zone. So you could still use the screener to get what those green symbols in the materials. So most all of these have something in the green, as you can see. All right. So let's go ahead and review the criteria for the bear's eye and bull's eye signals. I'm going to pull up a picture. One moment. Because my PDF is not working. And I'll fix all this in your um, script. But I want to make a little... Bear market one. Is this it? Okay, here we go. Hopefully, you guys can see this. Ah, it's not pulling over. Hold on. Oh, no. Hold on. Oh, make it out of full view. All right, there we go. All right. So these are the most questions that we get. So I know you guys are wondering, how do we determine this? So we're going to explain this. I wish I could make this bigger. I want to explain how these belt bear, bullseye and bear's eye signals work. Okay, that's a little better, I think. All right. So two things must happen for our bear market signal to trigger. So number one, the index must be in the health indicator red zone. And within two days, the health distribution for the red zone stocks must be at or greater than 40%. Okay. So I'll include this slide um, in your script. Now let's look at um, what we need for the bull market. So let's get rid of this and pull up the other one. All right, sorry, that's the biggest I can make it. 
All right, so the bull market signal can trigger when one of two things happens. So number one, the health distribution percentage of red zone stocks drops below 60% only after being above 60%. So the index may still be in the health indicator red zone, or the health indicator entry signal can mark the bullseye market signal. All right. And um, what we're going to do is I'm going to review some frequently asked questions that we got last time on the bullseye and bear's eye signals. So the first question was, how do I set the bullseye and bear's eye signals? So you do not need to set these signals um, within your program sites. We, TradeSmith, automatically sets these for you. Um, we will notify you automatically via email when there's a change in the market condition. Again, you have to have a subscription to get these bullseye and bear's eye alerts, okay? So you don't have to do anything special. If you have this service, it's already included. Number two, can I review the market signals from search for ticker? So yes, you can type in the ticker symbol for the index and review our market signals by enabling your chart settings. So I'm going to go ahead and show you. Let me get rid of this and make the website a little bit bigger. Okay, there we go. All right, so um, let's just type in here, search for ticker. Uh, let's just type the S&P 500. So I can type that in there. I can click here. Um, and then in order to, you know, enable to see the market signals, you do have to kind of enable your chart. So let me just show you how to do that. So as you can see, when I typed like the SPX up here, it automatically took me into the charts, which is a tab you definitely want to be on. If you click open chart settings here and scroll down, um, you can under events right here, you can make sure mine is not clicked. As you can see, it's not on this graph. Um, so if I click market signals, I can turn that on and then it's going to tell you the last time it entered into the green which was january 6 2023 and just hide chart settings and then you'd be able to um get that on your chart and let me go back so you can see it there we go <laughs> so you can see we're out of the bullseye signal here on the chart so you can either look up the uh, sectors here the markets or the indexes here, and then you can kind of um, examine it from this page versus the markets page. It's still going to give the latest price, the indicators, and everything like that. All right. The next question that we got, can I assign the bullseye and bear's eye signals to my stock positions? The answer is no, and it's a really good question, and we do have it as a feature request, but right now you cannot assign the bullseye and bear's eye signals to each individual stocks, individual stock position. So that being said, if you receive a bear's eye market signal, especially when, you know, more than one major index triggers a bear's eye market signal, you will likely want to close your brokerage positions and move to cash. That's what we do here, but totally up to you and to your discretion. Uh, but Usually when you get one or more index tr triggers the bear's eye, you definitely want to turn to cash. All right. And um, that being said, when, you know, that question came up, can you add the bullseye and bear's eye to each individual stock positions? The answer is no. For your individual stock position, you can, you know, use the health indicator as your exit for your individual holding. So say I was looking at... Apple, let's say. You can either type in Apple for the search for ticker or the uh, ticker symbol. So if you wanted to go by each individual ticker, you can, and you would just go by this right here, the health indicator. So you can see Apple's in the red. If you're conservative and this is your exit strategy where you, when you get an alert, you exit when it's on red and you wait for it to go back into the green. If I got an alert letting me know Apple's in the red zone, I would go to my brokerage and close it, but it's all up to your discretion. All right, next question that we got before we go to the forecast. So 
do you have a bullseye and bear's eye signal for cryptocurrency markets? At this time, we do not have a bullseye and bear's eye signal for crypto markets. Um, so if you went to markets, crypto, as you can see, we do not have one yet. To determine the crypto market's health, um, you can scan various collections of cryptocurrencies through, you know, a lot of our tools. You could use a peer quant tool if you have access to it. That can definitely help you determine, you know, like optimal thresholds for crypto markets. Um, but we should be discussing crypto market outlook tools um, in upcoming boot camps. We're working on that. We haven't had one in a while because, you know, the crypto market is not like it was before, <laughs> as you can see. So we do plan on doing a crypto market outlook. All right. So that is a wrap. Let's go ahead and just recap what we went over today. So today um, I showed you how our risk and health indicators can help you quickly assess the health of the major U.S. and foreign markets. So market outlook. Again, this is a lot, you know, you, uh, to take in. So just go slow with this. You can either have it in tile view or list view. I prefer list view. It's the same thing, same information. Nothing changes. It's just the way um, it displays on your screen. Again, you can either click on any of these to jump right to the chart below or simply scroll down. Um, you can see the health distribution for the entire index or sectors, indicators, and charts. You can actually go back if you know you have some time in your hands and research everything. So for example, if I wanted to go back and see you know, when COVID happened, I would have to change it to it's been more than three years. Isn't that crazy? And it's not going to show. Um, so I can do it to five years. And you should be able to see the crypt, uh, the um, the COVID one. Sorry, I forgot what I was going to say. All right, let's see. I think it was in February, wasn't it? Right here. Right there. So this is when we sent out the signal. We've sent it on February 19th of 2020, right before it, everything crashed. So you would have gotten an alert if you had this service letting you know to turn to cash and get out of uh, these markets. And I think all of these triggered all at once because I just remember this day getting all of them and I was like, oh my gosh. And so you can see if you go straight down here, look at this. You can see they were green and then look, they all turned red every single, I think it was like, almost 98% were in the red. And then you would have waited, waited. The S&P 500 was the first to come back and that came back on March 27th. Um, so, you know, a, a little over a month, they came back and we said, we think it's okay to get back in. People started getting back in, even though there was a lot of red, our signal said it's okay to get back in and you can see where it all turned green down here and went up. So this little blue price line right here is, where it downfall right here. You see the point, it went all the way down. And then you can see when we sent out the bull signal, it just started going up from there until May 9th of 2022, where you would have got another uh, bear signal. All right. We, again, we review the stock rating health and trend distribution graphs for the S&P 500 index. When most stocks, when most of the stocks that make up an index are in the health indicator red zone, it does tend to bog down the market. We did look at the bullseye and bear's eye signals and the criteria for each and how they trigger. Our market outlook tools can also help you scan for opportunities in various markers, mar markets or sectors with the help of our screener tool, okay? So you have the option to come right into the markets to start screening. So I could come here, like I showed you guys, I could screen for green uh, stocks, stocks in the yellow, or if I wanted to see what stocks are in the red, I could do that too. So this is gonna take you right to the screener tool versus you having to go here to the invest tab and clicking on screener and having to set up, you know, various filters, you can do it right from the markets tab. All right, so let me just pull up the contact us. All right, thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact our dedicated customer success team. We will be closed on June 19th in honor of Juneteenth. On Tuesday, June 20th, please join me for a live discussion on the asset allocation and PVQ analyzer tools. So 
the asset allocation kind of goes hand in hand with the markets where I was showing you if I wanted to screen for stuff in the different S&P sectors, um, it goes hand in hand with the asset allocation. So we'll come back to the markets tab um, next week as well and kind of mix that in. And we're also going to look at the PVQ analyzer tool. So if you want to basically, like I said before, avoid putting all your eggs in one basket, the asset allocation tool can help you by displaying your positions across sectors and industries. And then the uh, PVQ analyzer tool looks at the correlations between, you know, the stocks in your portfolio to determine the portfolio's normal risk. And then we're going to also review just like a like a practical application of these tools for your investments. Uh, these tools discussed um, in this lesson are available to trade stops by TraceSmith. Uh, if you have like a premium, I believe pro elite, and then of course our trade 360 and crypto by TraceSmith essentials and platinum accounts. However, if you don't have access to these tools, you're more than welcome to attend to see, you know, how they work. Please feel free to register. Even if you cannot make it, we will send you the webinar recording um, if you register to attend the next business day with this script. Thank you again for joining us and letting us be a part of your educational journey. Until next time, bye for now. All right, let's get to some questions. So Chris, let me get to the site. That's a good question. Okay, so Chris, let me just pull up, let me pull up my portfolio. I'm just going to open Merck for your question. All right, oh, there we go. All right, so Chris asked, is the markets tab available in Predictive Alpha? It is not yet, but it's coming. So remember, Predictive Alpha is in stage uh, phase one. I believe we have like four phases. Um, so I believe next week we're releasing some of the information. We do it, you know, twice a month usually um, on Thursdays. Um, but no, that is coming, Chris. It's a good question. So he asked, is the markets tab available in Predictive Alpha? And it's kind of hard. This is, you know, it's coming, but it's kind of hard because you have to remember predictive alpha is, you know, like it's a machine learning tool. So it's constantly inputting and feeding new data like all day long, you know, it never stops, you know, with the AI, with the artificial intelligence. Um, but um, something is coming with the markets tab with predictive alpha. So be on the lookout for that. To check all of the, um, we had a question from Anne. Um, like about releases. So we do do, you know, releases usually twice a month and you can find what's new, you know, on the site by going to the help menu. If you go to the education center and you click here, do you see where it says Tra Tracemith finance release notes? I go in here and I, I um, update this for you guys. So if you wanna learn more about, you know, the latest updates we have, so for example, if I clicked on June, this is gonna contain updates, you know, that were released in June. So far there's only one, cause we're just, you know, it's only June 13th. So if I click on that, I updated this five days ago, you can see, you know, all of the new stuff that got added. All right, um, you should be able to do this, you know, for every month and the trade in the education center, as you can see. It goes all the way back to December, 2021. All right. Patricia asked, I just saw your question. Okay, what is the yellow indicator on the graphs? Um, are you referring to this? Let me bring up the site. Every time you go into the education center, it removes the site for some reason. Well, for me, but not probably for you guys. All right. So Patricia, I take it you saw it in the, we were in the markets probably. So on the graph, so let me just pull up the S&P 500. So the yellow, you know, is still part of the health where it's in a period of correction, it's halfway to red. That's what yellow means. It can be in an uptrend, downtrend or side trend. Um, what are the exclamation yellow indicator on the graphs? Okay, let's go to the graph.
you may be referring to these because I know you can click on, you know, the chart indicators. These can get really um, complicated, but you could definitely set these up. Um, Patricia, I'm sorry if you can reword your question. I apologize. I don't I don't know if you meant the exclamation. What are the exclamation yellow indicator on the graphs? Do you know where I was in the um, presentation that you saw that? You might be referring to uh, was it like the little it was like a little triangle with the exclamation? Because if it was like that, let me search for SPX up here. And it may have been when we were playing around. Oh, we're here, sorry. Yeah, I don't know what you mean, Patricia, I'm sorry. Let me just look at it one more time. So if I go to stop analysis. Yeah, I'm not sure. Are you referring to this graph maybe? Was when I changed it, we looked at. Oh, see, I knew you were talking about something. Patricia, are you referring to these little exclamations? So what that is, there you're going to see a lot of these. So basically what it does is it's just confirming down pattern signals are triggered. So it's kind of like a warning, uh, letting us know that if you, you know, that, that those signals have been confirmed that it, there's going to be down patterns. So you'll see those. It doesn't mean that it's going to be like a bear signal here after each one. It's kind of like a warning, I guess you could call it. Um, kind of like the yellow, like caution, but it's just what it does is the system, the algorithms behind the scenes um, with our proprietary, proprietary information, it constantly confirms down pattern signals um, to let you guys know that, you know, we are confirming them and that they're triggered, but they're not there yet where they're going into a bear market. So I hope that helps. I'll include that question, Patricia, at the end of your script. And I do have a link to an article um, that I believe, who wrote that? Uh, I wanna say, I don't know if it was Mike Burnick. It might've been Mike Burnick. It might've been Justin when Justin was here, Justin Brill, but I do have a great article on that. So I will definitely include that in the script. Uh, Mike, yeah, and a clear indicator right here. So if you hover over this, so what that means is it's an unconfirmed down pattern signal trigger. So we couldn't confirm it. We almost could. Um, so you sometimes you see this, sometimes you don't. Um, but that was right before COVID when we had that, um, like a couple months before we started seeing like different changes in the market and stuff, but we couldn't really confirm it. Good question. And I believe, um, I believe Justin wrote that article. So I'm going to include that in your script. And he talks about the clear one too, the white. Okay, so let's see, Bill. Yes, you can definitely rewatch the webinar. It's going to be, it's recorded and I'm going to edit it when we're finished to make it all nice. Um, and you'll also have access to the script and it's going to be in the help menu. It'll probably be there this evening or later today, like after, after five, it takes me a couple hours to edit. It's crazy. All right, let me look at the Q&A box. Um, Rick, that's a good question. So you're asking, is there a section or list that views TradeSmith current strong buys based on all current TradeSmith indicators? Yeah, I mean, you could definitely set up a screener with those indicators. Um, if you're a Platinum member, you can use our timing uh, model, our pure quant. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of opportunities um, where you would see if it's like a strong buy or not, especially, you know, with showing the ratings, if it's, you know, strong, strong, bullish and so forth. All right, I don't have any more questions there. All right, so I can't wait to have much questions. Um, so yeah, today we just went over the bullseye and bear's eye. Next week, uh, when we go over the asset allocation, we're gonna come back in here and dive a little deeper. So we're not done with the markets yet, okay? This is just an intro, like an intro. All right, well, I appreciate all of you guys attending. Uh, be sure to check out Marina's video that she did for you guys. Again, go to the help menu. Um, 
it's on the registration. So you would click here. When you click to register, right here. So just click on that and you'd be able to see her video here. It's only, it's under a minute. All right. Well, thanks again for joining me and I hope you all have a wonderful week. Um, get out, get some sunshine and you all take care. And again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me. You can put attention Kristen. So if you do support at tracemit.com, attention Kristen, I'm more than happy to answer any questions, get you any back testing you need if we have it. We have it for mostly everything. Um, get you any back testing you need, any questions you have, definitely you can put attention to me and I will email you back. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye.